Garuk has been twisted, and we have built a deck to match him. Welcome to the channel, this is Chad, and today I'm breaking down Twisted Predator, a $30 Garuk Apex Predator Aristocrat deck list that makes use of the built-in sacrifice of some El Twisted Eldrazi Scions. The cost of this deck does include shipping and the cost of our Planeswalker. This video is part of our Oath Breakdown series of budget Oathbreaker decks designed to introduce new players to the format. On the Oath Breakdown, I break down the deck and build a backup so you can see how the deck was designed and how it works. If you like Magic the Gathering and Oathbreaker content like this, make sure you subscribe today. And now let's get into it. In today's Oathbreaker deck, our Death Magic Cursed and Twisted Oathbreaker is Garuk Apex Predator. For 5 a black and a green, he's a 5 loyalty planeswalker. He has a plus 1 ability to destroy another target planeswalker, a plus 1 ability to put a 3-3 black creature token into play with death touch, a minus 3 ability to destroy target creature and you gain life equal to its toughness, and a minus 8 ability target opponent gets an emblem with Whenever a creature attacks you, it gets plus 5, plus 5, and gains trample until end of turn. Garuk is a heavy hitting master. Too bad he comes at a high cost. His first ability will help us twist the screws holding down our opponent's planeswalkers. His second ability makes twisted versions of his classic pets. And his third ability will reward us for torturing our opponents. And even though it's not our focus, his final ability rewards all the other opponents for turning on and picking on the one unlucky emblem holder. Our signature spell for this deck is Gilgari Charm. It's an instant and we choose one. All creatures get minus one minus one till end of turn. Destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. We're using Gilgari Charm because it gives us a few Swiss Army options that will always help, but it will not hurt us to have it locked behind our high cost planeswalker. Now that we know what's in the command zone, what's our game plan? Nothing is sacred in this deck, we are going to flood the board with value Eldrazi and other creatures that can be sacked for mana and shenanigans. Our goal is to either go wide with a big board or punish our opponents through a plethora of death triggers. Now on to our breakdown. In the first section we'll be running some ramps so we can actually play our Oathbreaker in Feed the Predator. We're running Alborior Grazer for one green mana. He's 0 3. When he enters the battlefield, we get to play an extra land that turn. We have Land War Elves and Death Cap Cultivator, which are both mana dorks that tap for a mana. Death Cap Cultivator can tap for either of our colors, and we have four more cards types in our graveyard. He'll gain Death Touch. Next, we have Paradise Druid. She costs one and a green. She's a 2 1 with Hexproof as long as we don't have her tapped, but when we do tap her, she'll tap for either of our colors. Sakura Tribe Elder for one and a green is a 1-1. One, one. We can sacrifice him to search our library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped, and then we shuffle our library. Fertilid for two and a green is a elemental creature. When he enters the battlefield, it comes into play with two 1-1 one, one counters on him. If we pay one and a green, we can remove a 1-1 one, one counter from him to search our library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped, and then we shuffle our library. So being able to use Sakura Tribe Elder in our stack deck and Fertilid in our deck is going to actually help us get those death triggers, plus they're going to fix our mana. Spring Bloom Druid for two and a green. When it enters the battlefield, we can sack a land, and if we do, we search our library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library. From Beyond for three and a green is a Devoid Enchantment. At the beginning of our upkeep, we put a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield, and at any time, we can pay one and a green and sacrifice From Beyond to search our library for an Eldrazi card, reveal it, and put it into our hand, and then shuffle our library. We're mostly running From Beyond just as a spell that's going to give us some extra mana every turn, and in the right situation, those little 1-1 one, one Scions are going to be power and defense for our game plan. Nest Invader costs one and a green. When it enters the battlefield, it will give us a 0-1 Eldrazi spawn with a sacrifice this creature at a colorless mana to your mana pool. Blister Pod for one green is a 1-1 Devoid Eldrazi drone. When it dies, we put a 1-1 Eldrazi Scion creature token on the battlefield that can be sacked for mana. Carrier Oliver Thrall does the same thing, except he's a 2-1 for one and a black. And Wanted Scoundrels for one and a black is a 4-3, but when it dies, we give two treasure tokens to one of our opponents, which is an interesting political piece. You may have noticed that our last couple creatures only gave us some value when we let them die. So let's do just that in Sweet Sacrifice. So 
we're going to focus on some sack outlets to help us set up our plan for the end game. First, we have Carrion Feeder for one black mana. He can't block, he's a 1 1, but whenever we sacrifice a creature, he gets a little bit bigger. Smoldering Abomination costs 2 and 2 black. He's a 4 3 Eldrazi with Devoid and Flying. At the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice a creature. Whenever we sacrifice a creature, we draw a card. Brood Butcher for 3, a black and a green, has Devoid and is a 3 3. When Brood Butcher enters the battlefield, we put a 1 1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield that has Sacrifice this creature, add 1 mana to your mana pool. If we pay a black and a green, we can sack a creature, and target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. So it's nice that we have some incidental removal, as well as a little bit of ramp on Brood Butcher. Next, we have a Zoni Thousand Eyes for 2, 2 black, and 2 green. She's a legendary elf shaman with power 2, 3. She has undergrowth. When she enters the battlefield, we get to create a 1, 1 black and green insect creature token for each creature card in our graveyard. And she also has pay a green and a black, sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and draw a card. We will be eking out incredible value by making use of the same death triggers as we look at our next section, Pain and Gain. Old Divine Reclamation is an enchantment that costs three, a black and a green. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. Death Reap Ritual does this a little bit better for two, a black and a green. It says at the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. Catacomb Sifter for one, a black and a green has Devoid and is a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, we make a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion creature. Whenever another creature we control dies, we scry one. Grim Harspex for two and a black is a 2-3 more creature, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we draw a card. Midnight Reaper does the same thing, but we also take one damage when that happens. Sifter of Skulls for 3 and a black is a 4-3 with Devoid. It says whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we make a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion. And finally, Butcher of Malakir for 5 and 2 black is a 5-4 with Flying. It says whenever Butcher of Malakir or another creature we control dies, each opponent has to sacrifice a creature. We're going to use all these effects just to stay ahead. But because our enemies are going to have their own game plan, we'll be looking at additional removal to make sure that they can't get ahead of us in bad company. We're running Caustic Caterpillar for one green. It's a 1-1 one, one insect. If we pay one a green, we can sack it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. For two and a green, we have Reclamation Sage. It's a 2-1 elf that when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. For two and a black, we have Plague Crafter. It's a 3-2 Human Shaman. When it enters the battlefield, each player has to sacrifice a creature Planeswalker, and each player who can't discards a card. Ravenous Chupacabra for two and a black. Enters the battlefield, we get to destroy target creature and opponent controls. Bone Shredder for two and a black is a 1-1 one, one Flying Echo creature, and when it enters the battlefield, we destroy target non-artifact and non-black creature. And Flesh Bag Marauder for two and a black when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature, and it's a 3-1. Now, Garuk isn't the only Twisted Master in this deck. Let's look at the rest in Twisted Nobles. We're running Falconrath Noble for 3 and a black. It's a 2-2 Flying Vampire. Whenever Falconrath Noble or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. Poison Tit Archer for 2 a Black and a green is a 2-3 with reach and death touch, and whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Vindicted Vampire for three and a black is a 2-3. Whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Sir Conrad the Grim is kind of a bomb in almost any deck he makes an appearance. For three and two black, he is a 5-4 legendary creature human knight. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere, other than the battlefield, or a creature leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. For one and a black, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. And finally, we have Zulaport Cutthroat. For one and a black, he's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever he dies, or another creature we controls dies, each opponent loses one life, and we gain one life. If we do end up with a large army of critters, and we need to get those Eldrazi Scions through, let's do so by crashing through. We're running Overrun for 2 and 3 green. It gives all creatures we control plus 3 plus 3 and trample till end of turn. And Enray's Forerunners for 5 and 3 green. It's a 7-7 seven, seven boar with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. And when it enters the battlefield, each other creature we control gets plus 2 plus 2 and gains Vigilance and Trample till end of turn. Now that we've gone through all the cards in the deck, let's have a gander at what makes it run in the Mana Base. 
we're running Blighted Woodland. It taps for a colorless, which helps with some of our Eldrazi shenanigans. And if we tap three in a green, we can sack it to search our library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library. Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds are two cards that can be tapped and sacrificed to allow us to search our library for basic land card and put it into play tapped. This helps us out because it will help us fix for some of those cards that cost two black or any combination of our colors. We're running Gilgari Rot Farm. When it enters the battlefield, it enters tapped. We return a land we control to our owner's hand and it taps for one green and one black. We're running Jungle Hollow. When it enters the battlefield, we gain one life and it'll tap for either of our colors. Command Tower can tap for any of our colors and enters play untapped. And we are running Nine Forests and Seven Swamps. Now that we've looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. This cost includes shipping, but not the cost of the basic lands. The average cost of a Garuk Apex Predator deck on Oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $173.12. Our deck is much lower at $28.83. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description. This deck was built on a budget, but if you have the resources, here are some betterments and improvements you might want to consider. We can add Blood Artist. It's going to be another one of those nobles that allows us to burn our opponents for some dice triggers, and we're going to remove Bone Shredder. Let's go ahead and add an Awakening Zone. At the beginning of our upkeep, it also creates a 0-1 Eldrazi creature so that we can sack for mana. And let's get rid of Wanted Scoundrels, which really benefits our opponents more than us. For a flavor win, and just as a good card for a large army of creatures, let's add Eldrazi Monument. It costs 5 colorless. Creatures we control get plus 1, plus 1, and have Flying and Indestructible. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice a creature. If we can't, we sacrifice the Monument. And for that, we're going to remove Moldervine Reclamation. Next, let's add God Eternal Ronus and take out and raise Forerunner, since it essentially fills the exact same role, but it's a little bit more efficient. Let's put in an Overwhelming Stampede, and let's actually replace our signature spell. Now, if you like this deck list or any of the cards in it, check out Mythic Games Colorado, link in the description. Now I've got to ask, how do you like today's deck, and how would you upgrade it? We want to know, so tell us below. It also helps us if you remember to click the button to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when our next Oath Breakdown video goes live. There will also be a playlist and a video here if you want more from Signature Spell Bomb. A huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oath Break Another Deck.